to be empowered by your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding. Tonight, let the entrance of your word give light. Amen. Give understanding. Amen. Let it impart wisdom for living. Amen. Or strategies for effective living in Jesus' name. Amen. And help us to experience the miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we will have answer. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight, we are into study 32 of our series, and we're looking at Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, and we're looking at preparation for the miraculous. Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and not there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come near, come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. We are looking at these verses tonight to look at a few things we can learn. The crossing of River Jordan was miraculous, and Israel was at the verge of experiencing this miraculous crossing. However, experiencing the miraculous is not automatic. There is the necessity of preparation. That's why we're looking at preparation for the miraculous. Israel was told to sanctify themselves in preparation for experiencing wonders. Israel will experience miracles while the leadership will experience divine magnification. As the congregation is experiencing God's miracles and wonders, the leadership will be experiencing God's magnification and exaltation. It's a blessing for all. It's a win-win situation for everybody, leader and followers alike. This sets the pattern and principle for us today, preparing ourselves, puts us in line for experiencing the supernatural and the miraculous. And how timely the message of tonight, because August conference is just around the corner. I believe you are preparing for the miracles. Amen. It's going to be a time of divine visitation. Amen. It's going to be a time of God ministering to us, lifting us up, and reaching out to us in our need and in our challenges and bringing solution to our situation. We need to prepare for the miraculous. If we want God to move mightily during the conference, it's not just going to be automatic, we need to prepare. And tonight's message is like helping us towards knowing how to prepare for the miraculous, how to prepare for divine intervention during the conference, how to prepare for divine visitation and presence at the conference. And I pray the Lord himself 
it will help you to prepare so that as you come to the August conference, it's going to be a time of refresh, a time of renewal, a time Amen. of a time of uplifting, a time of, triumph, a time of victory, a time Amen. of dominion, a time of deliverance, Amen. and a time of mighty breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing we see in this passage in Joshua chapter 3, verse 1, and Joshua rose early in the morning, but not only him, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and not there before they passed over. It was not only Joshua, Joshua and the people, Joshua and the children of Israel, they rose up early in the morning and they moved, moved towards their objective, crossing River Jordan, moved towards their destiny, inheriting the land of Canaan. And we also must rise and move, rising early to move. Very, very important, rising early to move. In preparation for crossing over the Jordan, Joshua and the people rose early to move. My brethren, as the leadership is rising early to move, don't be left behind. Rise early with us and move. As we are preparing for the August conference, don't say, well, I will come 2024. There's still time. No, God needs you there. 2023 August conference, you must not be, be missing. Rise early to move. As Joshua was moving, Israel moved with him. And as we are moving, you need to move with us. They rose early to move. This is very significant and important. Why rise early to move? Rising early to move, rising early to do important things must characterize our lives. If you have not been doing that, it needs to characterize your life. Rising early to do important things. This morning, I rose early. I did my quiet time. And I wrote down the things that God taught me and God shared with me. It's important. Rising early to do important things must characterize our lives. It is the victory, is the secret of victory in the spiritual life. If you want to be victorious in your spiritual life, you need to cultivate this habit of rising early to move, rising early to do important things. Abraham rose early to obey God. Genesis chapter 22, verse 3. Because why did Joshua do that? You see other saints of God, they've done that. If it is not, I mean, very, very beneficial, they will not be doing that. In Genesis chapter 22, in verse 3, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son and claimed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. God told him to go and sacrifice his son on Mount Moria. And the Bible says, Abraham rose up early in the morning. He rose up early in the morning to obey God. He rose up early in the morning to carry out God's order. He rose up early in the morning for worship because your sacrifice is worship. Rose up early in the morning. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, let's see. Abraham is, a fa is our father in the faith. Jesus is the founder of the faith. And you can see our father in the faith rose up early in the morning to obey God. Our founder of the faith, what did he do? Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And I'm asking you, if our founder, in the, if our father in the faith rose up early to obey God, and our founder of the faith rose up early to do my time, why must we not rise up early to do important things? Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. One quiet time, Jesus rose up early in the morning to do his quiet time. So Christ rose early in the morning to pray. 
and to seek his father's faith. Abraham rose up early in the morning, you know, to go and obey God. Others have done so also in other generations. Psalm 5, verse 3. Psalm 5, verse 3. So we can emulate them. We can be imitators of them who through faith and patience have inherited the promises. Psalm 5, verse 3. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and we look up. My brother, rise up in the morning and look up. Because if you can look up, God will send you help from his sanctuary. Amen. If you look up to the hills, when come your help, help will come from those hills. Look up. <laughs> rise up in the morning and pray. Rise up in the morning and do your quiet time. Rise up in the morning and meet God. Rise up in the morning for worship. Rise up in the morning for devotion. Very important. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 and 5. These are people that have gone before us. Morning, morning, morning. Very important. When the day is still fresh, in the morning, when the confusion and the commotion of the day has not arisen, early in the morning, when everything is still clear and the, you know, the busyness of the day and the, you know, Bustle and bustle of the day has not burst into the into very quiet and serene early in the morning. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned uh, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear the learned. Let God go morning by morning. Rise up early in the morning. And hear from God as you learn Hear from God as somebody is wise. Receive knowledge from God for empowered living. The Lord had opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Morning by morning, said God, every morning I rise up early, I listen to Him. I receive knowledge. I rise up early, I receive wisdom. I rise up early every morning. We must do the same. And the Lord will say, He will help us in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 25. Early in the morning, so important. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day, I have even sent unto you. All my servants, the prophets, they be rising up early and sending them. Can you see that? God says, before you go in the day, I want to give you my word. Before you go out in the day, I want to tell you the direction for the day. Before you step out into the world, let me tell you what I want you to do for the day. And God was always sending prophets. They delivered their messages early in the morning early in the morning. And God here says, I sent my servants, or I sent unto you all my servants, not just some of them, all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. If God will send you a message early in the morning, it tells you that it's very, very important. Rising early to walk, gives a head start in the day and results in much accomplishment. You know, even in, our, even in our personal lives, don't be somebody that, you know, unless maybe if you slept, you worked very late and you slept very late, 11 a.m., you are still on the bed. Unless when maybe you are tired, maybe you did night work and you need to, to rest, how can 11 a.m. still be meeting you on the bed? You need to rise up. You need to rise up. Proverbs chapter 31. Look at this virtuous woman. She's, she's not virtuous for nothing. She's not virtuous just because we want to label her virtuous. But look at some of the qualities of this woman. It's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 15. She rises also while it is yet night, at the dawn of the day, and giveth me to her household. 
and a portion to her maidens. This woman, very early in the morning, she's prepared for the day, breakfast on the table, caring for her family. Everything is ready. How, how will the husband of this woman not love her? The Bible says, rising up also while it is yet night, at the dawn of the day, she's up. She's up. Breakfast is ready for a household. Everybody is prepared. Children are prepared to go to school. Husband is prepared to go to work. And the servants also, they are prepared to start work during, during the day. The woman, she doesn't eat the bread of idleness. That's what the Bible says. And early in the morning, she rises. Why would she not accomplish much? Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Very important. So even in our personal lives, very, very important that we rise up early in the morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. The Bible says, in the morning, sow thy seed, and in the evening, with all know thy hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. In the morning, sow thy seed. The people that come in the evening, they want to have an harvest. So you didn't sow any seed in the morning. Don't get an address immediately you sow seed. There is a time lag between sowing and harvest. And if you didn't sow seed in the morning, and the whole day has come, what are you going to reap in the harvest in the evening? There is no harvest. But when you rise up early in the morning and you sow your seed, you can come back in the evening, in the evening of life, evening of time, and come and reap an harvest because. In the morning of life, you sow seed. Those of us who are young, sow seed. Seed of diligence. There will be a harvest of wealth. Sow seed. Seed of commitment. There's going to be the harvest of blessing. Amen. In the morning of life, sow seed. In the morning as you wake up, sow seed. Listen early to work gives you a head start in the day and results in much accomplishment. So spiritually, rise up early in the morning and do something. Physically, rise up early in the morning and do something. Even in your place of work, if you are not doing shit work, and get to work early. Do something early. You know, by the time it's 12, you know there are some people that work, they don't even work beyond 12. But they rise up early. So people start work at 7 a.m. by 12 noon. They've already done five solid hours of work for the day, and they've accomplished so much. You know, that's the time that some people are just waking and say, is it even, is it today, today? I, I didn't know that it's already, when some people have already finished the work for the day. They've already done five hours solid. Most of the great writers that we have in the world today, some of them are written 20, 30 classics. Many of them never walk beyond 12. They rise up early. Some of them 6 a.m., some of them 7 a.m. And they will write for five hours continuous, 7 to 12. They task themselves. By the time it's 12, they're going for lunch and they're going to rest for the remainder of the day. And their career has always been like that. And they're very, very productive, but they rise up early. Let's learn from all these people. Let's learn from the spiritual fathers. Let's learn from people you know that have accomplished much rising early to move and we see Joshua here they rose early to move he and all the people and as we are rising early to move my brother don't be left behind sister don't be left behind rise early with us move with us and the Lord will do it in your life in Jesus name Amen. in Joshua chapter 3 as he rose up like that, Joshua 23, verse 1, and Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from shooting and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and not there before they passed over. You are going to pass over. But don't move on the day you are passing over. People may be too tired. Make preparation. And Joshua says, in three days' time, we are passing over Jordan, but we need to move near. Move near your goal. Move near your destiny. 
moved near your objective. They moved from shipping. They came and camped near Jordan so that to be ready. When it's time to move, as the priest moved, calling the Ark of the Covenant, wanting to go into Jordan, you will remove from your place and follow. And that's what they did in verse 3. In verse 2. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing the Ark, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which you must go. For ye have not passed this way either to the given them, gave them instructions. Don't move before you are told to move. Just sit down where, we, where you are. But when you see the priest of the Lord carrying the covenant, the ark of the covenant, as they pass you and they are moving ahead, everybody rise up and fire and follow. But make sure 2,000 cubits between them and you. Don't come near. It's dangerous to come near the ark. You can be struck dead. Don't come near. Give the space. Give the reverence. Follow from afar. 2,000 cubits. And then you have not gone this way before. And we're telling you the way, way to comport yourself, the way to do, so that you, instead of, you know, uh, experiencing mercy, you don't experience judgment. We're telling you, follow instructions. And they did. In verse 6, And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, and pass over before the people. Did the priest obey? The Bible yes. took up the ark of the covenant, and before the people. Obedience is required of everybody. It's not only the people that were told, when you see the Ark of the Covenant going there, stand up and follow, and let there be 2,000 cubits. Even the priests have to obey, obey instructions. Joshua told them, take the Ark of the Covenant, move, and go before the people. And that's exactly what they did. Obedience is required everywhere, in the rank and file of the church, in the rank and file of leadership, everybody there must be obedient. That, that's the only time that God can walk. You know what he said? The Lord that God walked in the midst of thee to deliver thee and to deliver your enemies before you. Therefore, shall your camp be holy. That is still no only thing in your camp. And then he took it away. If you will see the rebellion, if you will see the obedience in our camp, of course, the Lord will turn away. But he doesn't want to do that. He wants to help us, he wants to bless us, he wants. To, to be, you know, a God unto us. And that's what he did by the grace of God. He commanded the priests and the priests, they followed. Then in verse 5, and Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Amen. That word of Joshua. What is it going to mean? to create a rising expectation of miracles because it's already telling them tomorrow is going to be a glorious day. Tomorrow is a day. Tomorrow is a day of breakthrough. Tomorrow is a day of wonder. Tomorrow is a day of miracle. There will be rising expectation of miracles in the heart of the people. After three days of lodging near Jordan, Jordan Joshua told the people to sanctify themselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Man. This heightens the people's expectation of miracles. It goes a long way to boost their faith. It empowers the nation to gear itself up for the miraculous. It inspires the people to go all out to experience wonders. It propels the people to abandon the shores of mediocrity and launch out into the deep for glorious triumph. You know, I don't know what you've been going through. The disciples, they said, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. But Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Ahead is a miracle. Ahead, there are wonders. Go ahead, launch out into the deep. And here, Jesus was told, you, 
sanctify yourselves because tomorrow, ahead of you, the Lord will do wonders. There will be an expectation of miracles. You go ahead and sanctify yourself. You know that what is going to follow is a miracle. What's going to follow? Wonders. You go ahead and launch out into the deep. And you know that you cannot but bring out, I mean, abundance. You are going to bring back abundance as you launch out to the deep. Rising expectation of miracles. And they are telling you, August conference, you cannot afford to. Yeah. 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 Rising expectation of miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Rising expectation of divine visitation. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever needs to be rooted out of your life at that August conference, they will be rooted out in Jesus' name. Expectation of breakthrough. Because you prepare yourself, prepare yourself for the miraculous. Sanctify yourself today. Because at the August conference, the Lord will do wonders. Amen. In place to receive, you know, glorious things from God. What preparations are we making for God's visitation? We need to be asking ourselves, what expectation are we entertaining? Are we looking forward to experiencing God's wonders tomorrow like Israel? When Joshua told them, sanctify yourselves, you do that today. But tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders. The sanctification comes before yes. God. And if you will do your part, God will do his part. If you sanctify yourselves today, God will do wonders tomorrow. And if you prepare ourselves yes. for today, by visitation at the conference, and I pray that you are going to prepare yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Even as we come on Friday, you remember Friday has been distinct, I mean, has been declared a day of praying and fasting. As we come on Friday to fast, to pray, we're going to, it's going to be part of preparation also for the conference. Come and fast and pray. Come and prepare for the conference. Come and prepare for the miraculous because the Lord will do wonders in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All the children of Israel, look at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. What did Moses tell the children of Israel? And see what it's going to create. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord shall fight for you. Amen. And these are all your things. And then he told them in verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Amen. The Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. You know what Amen. I mean? Moses told Israel that they were seeing the last vestiges of Egypt, that Egypt will be wiped out. Hmm. The rising expectation of Jesus. They knew that their freedom was around the corner. They knew, they knew that the oppression was over. They, and they were expecting. And I stand here as a, as a servant of God, I'm telling you at the August conference, miracles will happen. Miracles will be experienced. Amen. Amen. There is an expectation in your heart, in your life, in your mind, that you are coming to that conference with great expectation, and those expectations they will not be dashed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Look at Second Kings, chapter two. Let me show you something. Second Kings, chapter two, in verse nineteen. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord seeth, for the water is not and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put out and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. You know what we are saying here? Knowing that Elisha had just received Elijah's mantle, it created a rising expectation of miracles 
in the mind of the people of Jericho, the moment they saw that Elisha had received Elisha's man to say, before you, you are passing the area and you are going, but before you go, that power you have received, we, we believe you have received the power. We believe you can do something. Our city, we are suffering. Our water is poisoned. Our ground is barren. Before you move on, use that power. Use that authority. Do something here. Did he do? Of course. Rising expectation of miracles. The moment they saw that Elisha had received Elijah's mantle, there was a rising expectation of miracles in their mind, and they demanded for it and said, do something about our situation, and Elisha did. So knowing that Elisha had received Elijah's mantle, created the rising expectation of, of miracles in the people of Jericho, and they requested Elisha to pass on their own pursuits of miracles before he, before he moved on. And Elijah did. And I believe that your own portion of miracles, they will be passed on to you. Amen. Amen. expectation of miracles. You know what the Bible says? The need of the prophets, so shall you prosper. It will be to you according to your faith. It will, it will be as it has been told you. It will be me, and you prepare. You will experience the miraculous. You will experience, you will experience victory. You will experience Amen. the you will express the blessings of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Joshua was assuring the people in Joshua chapter 3, Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, as Joshua was speaking to the people, God also was speaking to Joshua. Because you cannot move on in the vineyard and you yourself, you will not be a partaker. Joshua chapter 3, and Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Mm -hmm. God was saying his own to the people, God was saying his own to Joshua. In verse 7, and the Lord said unto Joshua, in verse 5, it was Joshua saying unto the people, in verse 7, it was the Lord that said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. So as Joshua was encouraging and then boosting the faith of the people, telling them God is going to move in a mighty way in their lives, God was also telling Joshua, I'm going to move also mightily in your life, and I'm going to magnify you. What do we see that? Reassuring, reassuring encouragement of the maker. He that waters shall be watered. Water. So. Joshua is encouraging the people. God came to encourage him. But Joshua was telling the people, God is going to do wonders in their life. God was telling Joshua, I will do wonders in your life as well. If you water, you will be watered. It's, it's a principle of scripture. As you water, you will be watered. You know, many times people ask me, I say, but pastor, where do you get all these messages from every time? Oh, I'm watering. As I water, God must water me. It's a principle of scripture. When I give you one, God will give me another two. Then I give you one from the two I have. I still have one left. And then God will give me another three. I'm just moving from you know, grace to grace, from glory to glory. The more I give out, the more I receive. Because it is normal. He that waters shall be watered. But the one that is holding, you know what the Bible says? There is he that we told them more than his meat. It tended to penury. He will keep no more revelation from God. Only that one superb revelation he has gotten five years ago is the only one else he has because he's keeping it from everybody. They know they must not be like me. If I share it now, we will know the same. No, 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 no. If you share one, God will give you two new ones. That makes you to be ahead of the people. You give them the two new ones God has given you, give you another four. That always makes you to be ahead of the people because in that waters shall be watered. As Joshua is telling them, sanctify yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders. God also came to Joshua and said, don't worry. Even you that are encouraging other people have come to encourage you. Today, this day, will I begin to magnify you? This day, will I begin to do I mean, wonders in your life? And I will show the people that as I was with Moses, I am with you. So that's important. 
God later told Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify you, not in secret, before all Israel. This is a reassuring encouragement from our maker. Such encouragement puts a spring in our step. Such a promise boosts our confidence of faith. Such a word from God enables us to move with boldness in executing God's assignment. That's why we are bold to do whatever we are doing. Some say, Pastor, you never even fear. What are you going to fear? You have heard from God. There's no place for fear. You just move. Say, we don't know what is going to happen. Don't worry. You do your part. God will do his part. He says, stretch what you That's all you need to do. God will help I mean, I mean, the Red Sea. He says, move around in my Jericho. I mean, move around, around the walls of Jericho 13 times. Once a day for six days, seven times on the seventh day, make it 13 times. Blow the trumpet, give a great shout. That's your part. Do your part. God will do his part. The world will fall down flat. Lay hands on the sick. That's your part. The sick will recover. God will do his part. So confidently we can do whatever God wants us to do because we have heard from him. A reassuring encouragement of the maker. He's told us to move. We can move with confidence. We can move with faith. We can move with assurance. We can move with certainty. We can move. No fear. Very, very important. Who will not rejoice and relish such encouragement? If God comes to you and tells you, this day, this day, will I begin to magnify you? Mm. Won't you be happy? Yes, yes sir. sir. Won't you relish it? Yes, yes. sir. And then after God has said, this day will I begin to magnify you. Then the devil will say, who believe it? Who? He will tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Even the way you say it, even the words that will come from your mouth will blow Satan away. <laughs> it's a word from God. Mm -hmm. Almighty God. You rejoice. You relish in such an encouragement. This is a word from him who never lies. Mm -hmm. This is a promise from him who says and performs. This is him with whom the Bible says there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God says what he means. God means what he says. He is the God that the Bible says faithful is see that promise who also will do it. Do it. Yes. Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. That's a promise. But look at the performance. Joshua chapter 4, in verse 14, of that day. God didn't postpone it. God didn't, he kept his word. That is it, I promised. He kept his word. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua. The sight of all Israel mm. said, I will magnify you in the sight of all Israel. And he magnified him in the sight of all Israel. And they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. God promised him and he did. and he performed it. He said it, he brought it to pass. Faithful is he that promised who also will do it. He's a God that says and does. His word does not return to him empty, void. It accomplishes what he has said it to do. If he tells you, I will magnify you, he will magnify you. If he tells you, I will do it before all Israel, he will do it before all Israel. Mm. Nobody can stay his hand. Nobody can challenge him. Nobody can ask him, what do I start? Nobody can query him. Why are you doing it? He makes up his mind. He does what he does, and nobody can challenge him. Mm. And if God will magnify you, nobody will be able to do anything about it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gives us the courage to tackle challenges such as crossing the virgin. What challenges are before you? If God tells you, sanctify yourself. Tomorrow I will do wonders. If God tells you, from this day, I begin to magnify you. What challenges? Go through the impossible. Walk through the impossible. Go around the impregnable. Go 
and do what God has told you to do. Move, you know, move with faith. Move in the strength of the Lord. Move in the power of the Almighty and do His will. Because this is an encouragement of the maker. You are not alone. He's partnering with you. You are not alone. He's there with you. You are not alone. He's going to do wonders in your life. And I do that as we prepare also for the conference that is coming. It's a preparation for the miraculous. Amen. For breakthrough. It's Amen. a preparation for miracles. It's a preparation for blessing. It's, it's a preparation for deliverance. It's, it's a preparation. It's a preparation. You know, mighty, mighty preparation for triumph. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I tell the Lord, we are preparing for the miracle. Like, my God, my God, for the miracle. And mighty name of Jesus. Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Father Lord, come this us conference, O Lord. Oh, Father, together to conquer. I am preparing for the miraculous, oh Lord. I am preparing for the miraculous by the power in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, God Almighty. Father, my Lord, I am preparing, oh God Almighty, for the miraculous. I know, Lord, your miraculous power will touch me again. We touch my house again, oh Lord. Father, Lord, I am preparing for the miraculous, oh God Almighty. As you have, Lord God Almighty, done it in past conferences, O Lord. Mighty and everlasting Father, I am preparing for the miraculous. Your miraculous power, mighty Father, will touch me. Your miraculous power, O God Almighty, will touch me. In the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, I pray for the willingness. I pray for the power, mighty Lord, to prepare for the miraculous. I pray, O oh God Almighty, Father, for the leading to prepare for the miracles. I pray, Lord, for the grace, for the strengthening to prepare, O oh God Almighty, for this forthcoming August conference. O oh Lord, my house, O oh Lord, and all the members of the church, Almighty oh and everlasting Father. Lord, we pray, God, let there be a mind. You need to be there. It's going to be glorious by the grace of God. You need to be there. for the miracles, Father Lord, that miracle Lord we receive. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We're going to pray and we're going to tell God, Oh God, what I've learned tonight, help me to rise early in the day to do important things. Rise early in the day to do my quiet time. Rise up early in the day. For worship, rise up in the day for prayer, rise up in the day to do important things in my life that will lead to accomplishment. Begin to pray, and God will give you every form of laziness will be gone, every form of uh, lethargy will be gone, every form of indifference and indolence will be gone. That God will cause you to rise up early in the morning to do important things that add value to your life. Begin to pray, and God will empower you. To rise up early in the morning, to do important things that add value to your life. Rise up early in the morning to do your accomplishment. Rise up early in the morning for what? Early in the morning to be on quiet time. Early in the morning to move. Early in the morning to wash. Early in the morning for prayer. Early in the morning to do your assignment. Early in the morning to do important things that add value to your life. Early in the morning to do things that lead to accomplishment. Students, you also can pray. Rise up early in the morning to study. Not early in the morning to jeep. Not early in the morning to be to, to just be playing around. Early in the morning, use it for productive things. Use it to study. Early in the morning, use it to prepare for your test. Early in the morning, use it to prepare for your exam. Early in the morning, when you are still fresh. Early in the morning. When your mind is still relaxed, very fresh, early in the morning, keep it in your books. You that are students, pray that God will help you that you will not be wasting your money. Yes. Your money will be money of productivity, money of accomplishment, money of doing something, something spectacular for your life. 
rising up early in the morning. Very important, my brother. Very important, my sister. If you're not rising up early in the morning, you are learning. God is challenging you. You need to rise up early in the morning. Very important. Rise up, rise up early. 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 Early for quiet time. Early for worship. Early to do important things that add value to your life. Early in the morning to do things that lead to accomplishment. Early in the morning that pave the way for progress. Do the things in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We're going to pray that all the encouragement we are hearing at the Bible study, at the leadership uh, master class on Friday, at the revival hour on Sunday, that all this word of God we are hearing will lead to a rising expectation of miracles in our life. It will lead to a great expectancy of God's visitation, of God's move, begin to pray. That God will use it to boost your faith. God will use it to boost your expectation, rise in the expectation of miracles. Sanctify yourself, prepare yourself, and guarantee tomorrow the Lord will do wonders in your life. The Lord will do wonders in your life. Rise in the expectation of your miracles. All oh, these words are. Here, oh Lord, all oh, this encouragement, oh Lord, let there be great expectations of signs. Let there be great expectations of miracles, and let it come to pass in our life, oh Lord. And let there be fulfillment in our lives, oh Lord, with these great expectations of miracles, of a mighty turnaround, oh God Almighty, of breakthroughs in our life. Father, Lord, your word that you are hearing, oh Lord, let the purpose of this world, oh God Almighty, let them be fulfilled in our lives, oh Lord. Let there be a glorious expectation, even as we are preparing for the conference, oh Lord. Let there be a mighty expectation of your wonders, of your wonders in our lives. Jesus, that Lord God Almighty, that which you have been doing, you will even do more, mighty Father. Oh Lord, going to meet you, Lord, in a concentration of your power. Lord, we pray, let there be the miracles. Father, Lord, let there be the establishment of the miraculous in our life, oh God Almighty Father. All these words that we are hearing, oh Lord, let there be transformation into glorious miracles, oh Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen. God assured Joshua that from this day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all this. And he did it. What a reassuring encouragement. We are going to pray and say, Oh Lord, all the reassuring encouragement you are giving me. Reassuring encouragement. Amen. We need the promise of God. We need the encouragement coming from the throne of God. When God says, This day will I begin to magnify you, He will do He can be trusted. Mighty Father, you have spoken to Joshua. I believe in the word of God Almighty. You have also spoken to me. You are the Lord that magnifies it. You are the Lord that do it wonders. Oh Lord God Almighty, I pray thee, Lord. Oh Lord of Lords and King of Kings. The Lord, I pray thee. That Lord, oh God Almighty, that you will begin to do wonders, oh Lord. In my life, in my ministry, in your church, oh God Almighty, that you will begin to do wonders, oh Lord, because Father, you have spoken, and Lord, I have received this word, oh Lord. Father, Lord, I totally surrender as you magnify Joshua, Lord God Almighty, your servant. May you magnify me, Lord God Almighty, Father, your servant, before the congregation, oh Lord. That as the word is spoken, oh Lord, there shall be a confirmation of the word in your life. There shall be a realization. 
Yes, yeah, shall be the wonders, O Lord. It shall come to pass. When there is a declaration of healing, they shall receive their healing. When there is a declaration of breakthrough, they shall receive their breakthrough. When there is a declaration of deliverance, they shall receive their deliverance. Almighty oh, and everlasting Father, begin to magnify me, Lord, in the midst of the congregation, that your name will be exalted among your people, O Lord, that the miracle also, God of Every moment your word is declared, it shall be fulfilled. Oh Lord, begin to magnify me, God Almighty, with the word of wisdom, oh Lord, and the word of knowledge, and oh God Almighty, the gift of the Spirit, that Lord, that I will use it, oh Lord, to glorify you, Lord, and to bring your people, oh God Almighty, unto a strong believing that Lord, you are among your people. Oh Lord, I pray that you will magnify me, Lord. Lord we magnify, so magnify Joshua as your judgment, Joshua, that you spoke came to pass. Lord, that every word I speak concerning your people will actually come to pass. So, Lord, pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, mighty Father. We are prepared for the miraculous. We also we are preparing for the miraculous at the August conference. Amen. It's going to be a time of divine visitation. Amen. Of mighty breakthrough. Amen. Of refreshing and revival. Amen. A time of restoration. A time Amen. of a time of breakthrough. Amen. A, time of, a time of dominion. A Amen. time. A time of liberty in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. A time of fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. form of frustration will be blown away in Jesus' name. Amen. Every form of confusion will be blown away. There will be clarity in the life of your people. Oh God, Amen. we have started our preparation. Preparation Amen. sanctifying ourselves. Preparation Amen. by believing your word. Preparation Amen. by rising expectation and looking forward to that divine visitation. And it will be as it was told us. Oh God, we will experience the miraculous and the wondrous in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 But today, help us to rise up early. Rise Amen. up early. Rise up early to do quiet time. Rise Amen. up early to pray. Rise Amen. up early to do important things that add value to our life. Rise up early to do things that contribute to accomplishment and progress. Every form of laziness, every form of lethargy, every form of weakness in the body, every form of weariness in the soul, we come and then in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the morning, empower us. When Amen. it is time to rise up in the morning, strengthen us, quicken our mother. The flesh will not be an enemy to spiritual progress. The spirit will not be an enemy to us doing the things that contribute to physical progress. Oh Amen. Lord, help us that as the saints of old have cultivated this habit, help us also to cultivate the habit. Rising up early in the morning and do things that contribute. I mean, to our progress and accomplishment. Do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sanctify ourselves. Believe your promise. Oh, God, rise in the expectation of miracles in our life. Oh, God, your encouragement is telling us faithful is it that promise who will do it. You told Joshua, this day I will begin to magnify you. That day you began to magnify it. You told him, I will magnify you before all Israel. That day you magnify me. You say and you do. You declare and you perform. You, 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 you promise and you bring it to pass. Oh God, we are praying. All your promises, all the wonders you have said you will do in the life of your people, Fulfill mm. and do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because we know your answer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.